Who here has woken up one morning and had a brilliant idea? And who then has put that idea into action? And who then has spent the next six months cursing themselves because of the emotional roller coaster that you put you, your family, your friends, and your teams through? But you carry on because you know what you're doing is 1,000% the right thing to do. Hi, my name is Eva Sonnenmoser from the Baden-Württemberg state government. And I'm Alexander Holt from the Scottish government. And this is a whistle-stop tour of a, a project of global friendships and shredded nerves. Shared challenges and challenging uncertainty. And in our own small way, helping the planet. So over the past six years, we see the rise of GovTech teams all over the world. SIFTEC Scotland, GovTech Lab Lithuania, or GoToGov Australia, just to name a few. So these teams, they lay at the cross-section of government and innovation ecosystem, like a translation service um, between bureaucratic blockers and agile entrepreneurs. And they are focusing on harnessing technology to deliver better outcomes for, for, um, for citizens. And given the impact on the national level, imagine the impact that could be there if they were brought together at a global level. And that's what we did. In March 2020, the Scottish Government set up the CivTech Alliance. Uh, the global group of like-minded CivTech, GovTech, CivicTech innovation teams from around the world. And as the lockdowns were coming up, so we spun up the weekly calls where this was the start of sharing resources and ideas, building relationships and trust. In effect, the start of innovation diplomacy, collaboration, bringing governments together through collaborating on innovative programs. And it's like a family, or as one member observed, these calls are group therapy sessions for those trying to change government. And imagine what could be achieved if we leverage the knowledge, the network, and the expertise for the benefit of people and the planet. And so we saw COP26 with Scotland hosting in Glasgow and being able to act as a convener, as much as a catalyst for an opportunity. And we were then beholden from March 20 on onwards to a crazy idea. How could we create the ultimate access program for climate tech companies to get in front of policy makers and procurers, innovators and investors across regional ecosystems within the group? And in fact, we were set up with our mission. Our mission was to source, surface, and scale climate tech solutions for global public sector applications. And it was an ambition, groundbreaking program which brought together eight governments and three academic institutions across 10 countries. Australia, Brazil, Denmark, Germany, Lithuania, Estonia, Scotland, Poland, Spain, and the United States. And for the program, we set up three climate challenges on food waste, food waste decarbonization, and environmental resilience. So we went out to the market with these challenges, uh, helped, we shaped with cooperation and collaboration with the UNDP, World Resources Institute, and Michelin Scotland Innovation Park. And we selected 18 companies from around the world with varied solutions, such as food waste to feed insect farms, uh, biomass to create hydrogen, sustainable fishery platforms, forestry management, and food waste app 
too good to go. And over the seven weeks preceding COP26 in November, we ran our virtual scale-up safari. So this is where each of the cohorts were rotated and hosted by each of the countries across the seven weeks. So we organized 69 engagement sessions, over 102 organizations with 200 plus introductions. In effect, a massive business development opportunity for companies. And then to COP in Glasgow, where our scale-ups presented their solution watched by people from 46 countries. And no visit to Scotland without a visit to Edinburgh Castle. And this was my highlight, a reception at the Great Hall. Delivering a project like this is not without its challenges. So how to develop value proposition that appeal both policymakers and scale-ups? What are the legal frameworks by which we can operate? And how to manage seven time zones with, with a difference of 17 hours over eight months? And then, of course, you think about the coordination. So you know how hard it is to organize anything within your own organization. Add in external agencies, industry groups, investors, academia. It starts getting pretty complex around the logistics. Times that by 10 countries and cultures, and the thing becomes uh, quite, quite a setup. So if these are the operational pain, what are your interaction with your own organization? So it's been great over the past uh, 24 hours meeting folks at this event. And I think this sort of scenario will probably resonate with a lot of you. But you know, who here has presented a plan to uh, back, back to the mothership with an idea um, to be greeted with warm words of support when, in fact, you probably know people are just hedging their bets? They're wanting to see whether this is going to work or not. It seems a bit too risky too ambitious, perhaps even too creative. But you carry on because you know it's the right thing to do. And then, of course, you wake up every morning with this all-consuming fog because it's never been done before, and you're carrying the reputation not only of your own country and your government, but also 10 others. But you carry on because you don't want to let down the other teams. And then. Every morning you wake up and it's not with elation. Actually, it's with that sinking pit in your stomach, really just kind of wanting to give up. But you still carry on because it's all about the mission. And if you don't do it, who will? So was it worth it? Was all this effort worth it? Well, from the company's point of view, as an example, Brazil Mataviva, with their forestry management system, as a result of the exposure coming through the program, one or two rising to $5 million deal with another Brazilian state, MASH makes from Denmark with their waste biomass uh, capability, actually it's negative carbon footprint, has accelerated their investment. Skopopolis from Brazil won a contract with the Lith Lithuanian mi municipality. Uh, and the routing company turned to a climate impact fund for their 15 million Series A uh, funding. And for the program team, there were shared success as well. We were delighted to win awards, to be featured as a case study, and be a blueprint for cross border innovation. The point about it was that this transcended borders and jurisdictions, and that's very much the theme we're getting to. If you've got major global challenges, we need to address them collaboratively. And so this was innovation, diplomacy, and action. You need the glue of innovation binding governments together. And that's essential for the societal challenges that are absolutely pressing for now. And to wrap up, you don't need a mandate. You just need a mission. Because we are all public entrepreneurs acting with the persistence to move forward, the resilience to take the flag, and the urgency to get results. So finally, a call to action for those creative bureaucrats who need to get over their fear of those roller coasters of working in government and pushing boundaries, then 
come join our weekly therapy sessions. Uh, the website will give all details. But it's a family, and it's the highlight of our week, being able to just speak to people who are doing amazing stuff. And again, all of you in this room are doing amazing stuff. And for all innovation companies, at the moment, our global scale-up program 2.0 is on with, three, with two new climate challenges. Deadline is the 6th of June. So next Monday, if you know of climate tech companies who are involved in green public procurement or natural capital, point them to us. And finally, no matter how crazy an idea, just crack on, even if it's in the face of absurdity. Thank you. Vielen Dank.